and hello YouTube, this is GS Massmart, and I'm here today with another brand new video for tutorials of GS. Now today we're going to be showing you how to green screen, also known as chroma key, in Adobe After Effects. And this works for a CC version, and I believe also for CS6, CS5, and probably even CS4. I'm not too familiar with the earlier versions of After Effects, but I do know this is something pretty common that a lot of people have been wanting to know how to do. And... Yeah, I'm here to show you how to do it. Now, step one is to create a new composition. Now, basically what green screening is, it basically takes out the background of a piece of video footage that you've recorded so that you can go ahead and place a new background behind your subject or behind the thing that you are recording. So we're gonna go ahead and make a 1920 by 1080. Don't know why we're at 16 minutes here, but that's fine. Just for tutorial purposes, you can um, adjust all these the way you want to adjust them. I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. Now the key to green screening is to, to basically have something like this. As you can see, our subject here is in front of a green screen that is you know pretty well set up I mean we have a few shadows here a few shadows here we have some white space up here um, you know, it's not the perfect green screen we have some color disconfigurations up here uh, the lighting is not very equal but for the most part this is a really good green screen and it'll definitely work in After Effects this also isn't the best camera I can tell that it's a little blurry you know and depending on what type of camera you have will also depend on how well you're going to be able to do this. If you have a really bad camera, then you know green screening may not come out perfect. If you have a very clear, high-end profile camera, then it's going to come out really good. So camera quality is definitely one thing. Another thing is making sure your green screen is perfect. You want to have equal lighting in your entire um, video footage. You want to have equal lighting you want to have no shadows you want to try to have the same you want to try to have the same tone of green throughout the entire footage so that it's easier to green screen um, if you don't have a green screen you can make it out of a green bed sheet you could use construction paper you could paint your wall green. There's a lot of things you could do to place yourself or the subject you're recording in front of a green, a lime green area. Or you could just buy a green screen from online and then you have an actual green screen. So after you've recorded your piece of footage, you wanna go ahead and drag it into Adobe After Effects into the project panel right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and drag it into here. Now if your video footage comes out too small, you can always adjust it to the size by grabbing the corner here, start dragging and hold shift. By holding shift you are keeping the proportions and keeping the ratio of the video footage so that it doesn't come out weird. And when you're done, go ahead and let go of shift and go ahead and let go of left click. Now. Don't worry about these black bars on the sides because um, let me go ahead and zoom in here real quick. What's going to happen is that you're only going to have the subject left. All this green is going to go away. Now, if you come as, if you come to a situation where you happen to have other stuff on the side here, say you have you know a white wall on the side here, say that your green screen isn't wide enough, you don't have enough construction paper, you know your bed sheet isn't wide enough, the green screen you bought isn't wide enough, and say that while you're recording you have you know some stuff on the side here. You can go ahead and crop that out with the masking method. The masking method you would use the pen tool up here and let's go ahead and zoom out real quick to about oops I don't want to do that. That's too far. Alright. If you want to go ahead and crop, you want to use your pen tool up here. And you know, then you just start masking out the area you want. But, 
this is preference, you know, if you have a green screen like this where, you know, it's all green, you really don't need to do masking. If you want to do masking, it's up to you. It's not really mandatory. So, the next step is to go ahead and go to the effects and presets right here, and you want to scroll down to keying. Click the drop down arrow, and you want to find the effect that's called key light. Drag the effect onto your piece of footage. You can also drag it on your timeline, doesn't matter. And you'll see a window pop on the left side here. Now, this is a really good effect. Uh, key light is a great brand, it's won several awards. So you're definitely using uh, top-notch stuff right here. A lot of options here. We're not going to be working with a lot of these. We're only going to be working with a few of these tools. Now, do be aware that the settings here, I'm going to be showing you which tools you want to work with, but the values you want to put in are going to be different for you. These values are going to be different for everybody. You know, And I'm going to be showing you that soon, telling you which values may be different for you. But generally speaking, what the first thing you always want to do with a green screen, and this is pretty much going to be for everybody the same, you want to go ahead and select your screen color. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Let's go ahead and move this down. We don't really need this anymore. We don't really need this either anymore. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little more space. All right. So, by screen color, you want to click this little um, button besides the <clears throat> color picking um, toolbox here. And when you click this little button, it will give you a pen. This is your color picker. And if you happen to have some shades, if you happen to have some shadows or some, you know, wrinkles <clears throat> in your green screen. <clears throat> Gosh, what's wrong with my throat today? If you happen to have, you know, some color disconfigurations. Don't select the darkest greens, but also don't select the brightest greens. You want to pick a green that's sort of in the middle, a mid-tone. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and click this green right here. Now, as you can see, it took out most of it. We still have, you know, we have, we have a small little shade here of green. And if you go ahead and click the transparency right here, you will notice that we actually have some of the suit here becoming transparent as well we can see that we can see through the face a little bit at the bottom here the pants are a little transparent we also see that we have some shadows here some dark spots over here so how can we fix all these things well firstly if you go ahead and go to your view menu again go ahead and click screen mat now everything that is black in your screen mat right here, everything that's black is invisible. That's what you're not going to be seeing. Everything that's white is going to be visible. And the whiter it is, the less transparency there is. As we saw in the suit, we could see the suit a little bit here, so that's why this area is a little darker. So our goal is to make our subject as white as possible. And our goal is also to make our green screen behind us as black as possible. To do this, we're going to go ahead and click screen mat right here. Now here on, it's kind of preference wise, if you want to work with screen mat, you can. I know some people who like to work with just final result and use the transparency toggle to work with this. Other people like to use the final result and the screen mat. They'll switch back and forth. But for now, we're going to go ahead and work with final result real quick. Now for clip black, when you work with this option right here, you want to make sure that you keep this a low number. If we go ahead, <clears throat> if we go ahead and um, observe what this tool does, if we increase the value, you'll see that our shadows do go away. Pay attention to the corners of this footage. The shadows do go away, which is what we want. And the higher we go, the more of our footage is being taken out. So generally speaking, you want to keep this number low, but if it happens to come to a point where you just have to put a little high because 
you know you want to get all those shadows out then you know don't worry about it you know you can keep it a little high we'll just go ahead and decrease the white here so if your uh, clip black is very high make sure that you decrease the clip white if your clip black is very low then you can probably keep clip white the same but these two options are the ones you're going to be one working with for quite a while to perfect your green screen and your chroma key we go back to our screen mat here now as you can see we've taken a lot of the white out in these corners here that we've had before so 27 seems to be a good value but as you can see we still have some black here we don't want this black here so we're gonna go ahead and go back to final product we're gonna go ahead and toggle transparency and we're just gonna go and lower this white right here as you can see we're making this darker now we're making the suit darker so it's not as transparent anymore and if we keep on bringing it down to 65 we see that we fix a lot of the issues where we could see through the face now if we go back to the screen mat you'll see that our entire subject is white which is exactly what we want so just go ahead and play around with these two options here a bit um, you know the main goal is to try and get as much of the background as black as possible and your subject as white as possible if you can't get it perfect that is okay you know it doesn't need to be a hundred percent perfect you know, just try to get most of the stuff you don't want out by playing around these two options now if we go back to the final result you'll see that we have it's done a pretty good job now some other things that you could work with is this hard light and soft light replace method now a lot of people like to use soft light but in certain scenarios hard light it can be really good as well because what this will do if we go ahead and toggle to transparency again if we go to soft light as you can see we still have this minor very minor yellowish greenish haze around our subject now if you wanted to get rid of this you could use hard light and this will basically replace that haze with a gray now some people like the look of this some people don't like the look of this so if you want to use hard light or if you want to use soft light it's up to your preference this is something I would honestly change when you have your background you know when you put your background in After Effects and you feel like okay maybe this could be a little brighter change it to hard light or you know no maybe it's not that big of a deal I can't really notice the haze around it so I'm gonna put soft light you know I think this is something you would want to work with when you actually have your background in your project but that's one thing to work with right there and the last thing we're gonna work with is with screen softness now screen softness is it just um, softens the edges around your subject generally speaking you want to keep this very low usually I would only put it to maybe one you know sometimes you can keep it at zero if you wanted to um, but depending on your preference you know you can make this very high and you'll see the difference but we're just gonna keep it at zero but sometimes having it at one can be very helpful but other than that, these are pretty much all the options that we have. You know, generally speaking, you want to go ahead and switch between final result and screen mat, and you want to work with the clip black and the clip white, and then work with the soft and the hard color, and lastly, the screen softness. <clears throat> now, once you've once you have that complete, what you can do is you can create a new layer, new solid and we'll make a red layer that's fine put it behind our subject and what you can then do is zoom in here and you could see how well the green screen did and you can obviously go back to the effects here and you could adjust these as you'd like 
now that we have something red behind you could adjust these if you wanted to adjust them depending on how it looks but now that our green screening is done we're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of how this is actually put to work now after you've done this you could put a picture behind your subject you could put a, a video footage behind your subject you could put anything behind your subject and it'll look like that that person or that object is part of that background if you wanted to put you know a video footage of people walking around a city and you're standing in front of that or you're standing in that city you could do that and it could look very realistic if you have the proper camera angles if you wanted to put your you know, subject in front of a picture of you know a trophy room you could do that and it'll look like they're part of that trophy room so there's a lot of cool things you could do with green screening and to do that you go to file import files or if you have a folder already like this then you could just drag the file in here And as you can see, I have a cool little basketball background here. And if we move this layer underneath our video layer, and we, same technique, making it bigger. like so you know it actually kind of looks like we are part of you know this background now, if you wanted to make it more realistic you could drop this photo into Photoshop and adjust the lighting a bit and you know make it more realistic but as you can see we could move our subject around and where we want it to move it around and if we were to you know scrub through this here you can see that our subject is actually talking and moving without the background changing and you know with a transparent background it actually looks like he's part of you know this basketball court room place very cool now you could do the same thing with a with video footage we'll show you that right now here I have some video footage and just drag and drop it in here and same method as before and as you can see as we skim through this, the video background actually moves with the subject moving as well. Very cool. You can make some really cool realistic things with these. And, you know, you can really put your creativity to the test. Now, as I was saying, um, when you have your background, then you may want to go back to your uh, video layer go to back to the effects panel and you may want to play around with these you know maybe you want to maybe you want to have hard light you know does that look better or does my soft light look better you know you could play around with these settings now if you wanted to you could change some more of the uh clip black or clip whiteness or the softness you know this is where you can make some more finer adjustments but generally speaking that's how you do it if you want to find some cool backgrounds like these you can go on YouTube and type in, you know, newsroom background animation or anything like that. And you should get some pretty good results. Or you could just go on Google and search some cool background images and you could place it in. So if you understand the concept, it should be very easy. And like I said before, I can only give you the tools you have to use. I cannot give you the exact values. You know, for me, 27 and 65 happen to be very good. For you, it might be, you know, 5 and 95 or 5 and 100 or 20 and 80 or 20 and 70 or 20 and 90, you know. It depends on your camera. It depends on the lighting. It depends on your green screen. But generally speaking, you want to work with crisp black, crisp white, screen softness, the uh, replace method, 
and the uh, screen color as well as the final result and screen mat. Those are the tools that you want to work with and the values will be up to you. So hopefully it's hopefully I explained it, you know, it can be a lot to grasp and it can look a little scary because a lot of options, but it is pretty easy and hopefully you, know, you could use this for some of your future videos and put your creativity to the test. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how to videos. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out and if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.